to take on South Carolina, playing just their eighth game of the season. They have had COVID-related issues all year long, and this just their fifth game in the last 49 days. As you take a look at the Carolina starting five, led by A.J. Lawson and Justin Manaya, one of the most versatile players in the Southeastern Conference. Off the bounce, and the step back for seventh, Woods won't go. And Sharif Cooper clears the glass. He will trigger to run the ball. Auburn attack. Yeah, you look at all five of those starters can run it, and they all run to that three-point line. They're a threat on offense early in the shot clock. Both these sides can put up some points. Defense in recent weeks has been a bit of a question mark, Jimmy, as Auburn gets on the board first. You know, it's an Auburn team that they have the ability to spread you out with that five-out offense. J Jalen Williams, a 6'8 guy, can play the five, just knock down that first three. Very difficult team to also stay in front of. And it's a this is a South Carolina defense today, but for Auburn, they can't run their offense. They have to make plays with that basketball. AJ Lawson knocks down the three. Gonna be critical for he and Jermaine Kusnard to shoot it better than they did in their midweek loss. They were a combined two of twelve from three-point range. Cooper. JT Thor will try for three and he'll knock it down. Yeah, really good find by Cooper. He attracted two off that initial ball screen coverage, and, and Thor did a good job, Beth, of playing behind that three-point line so he could catch it and step into a rhythm three. Kusnard off the bounce, and the follow is good. Wilkins Levesque. Yeah, that's twice now Levesque has gotten his big paws on a miss, and you have to keep him if you're Auburn off that offensive glass today. Long rebound to Manaya. Three double doubles in the last four games for Justin. And the blocking foul will be called on Auburn. And there is Frank Martin. Three and four on the season, one and two in the SEC if they're, after they won their opener against Texas AM. They've had eight games postponed or canceled, and Frank has tested positive not once but twice. Actually missed a game last weekend, just the third time he has not been on the bench in nearly 40 years of coaching yeah, Beth, Beth he's really been through it Frank Martin and the, the, the hair loss is tied to the COVID that's how it affected his body just a tough tough battler of a man we'll get into it later on but he's a guy that is all about building relationships with a guy spending time with him and it has really kind of knocked him back as a coach this year coaching his team yeah, as tough as it has been for him personally you know when you talk to Frank it's all about the team and uh, you know their inability to get together and uh, even as simple as watching tape running drills practicing they've hardly been together to practice this year well when you're a hard driving coach like Frank Martin is and you see the the, the numbers they're back it up the a limited amount of time that he's had with his team it has affected his defense in terms of how they play, but is it impacted, it impacted his voice in terms of how he communicates with his guys. And he's constantly behind the mask, limited time with him. And those coaches that are hard drivers, man, they thrive on that off the court balance that they keep with their guys. And it just has not been there so far this year. And there's nothing he can do about it. Just keep his nose down and keep grinding his way through it. 36 years has missed three games once for a one-game suspension once while he had to hit the trail recruiting as an assistant coach and then the COVID miss and the drive down the lane for Justin Manaya. there's a guy who does a little bit of everything for the South Carolina team and, and Frank would love for him to be even more aggressive scoring the basketball like that yeah, t t Ten and White is South Carolina's version of Alabama's Herb Jones. He can make a three. He's a ferocious rebounder, drives the ball a little bit. He just touches every part of the game on both ends of the floor. And to me, when South Carolina is at their best, they are setting the rules of the game early, driving the ball with hard drives. They're not settling for those jump shots. So far, so good. 
South Carolina with the one-point lead. Four of the five starters have had a hand in the scoring thus far. Kuznard will try for three. And that will go out of bounds to Auburn. Of course, the story for Auburn, the three consecutive 25-win seasons for Bruce Pearl. Lost a ton to graduation in the NBA. Uh, the rebuild underway. They have already announced they will not take part in the NCAA tournament this year. An ongoing investigation uh, into the program. Uh, but a terrific freshman class trying to pick up the slack. Led by Sharif Cooper and Justin Powell. Unfortunately, Justin has been in the concussion protocol now for quite some time. Missing his sixth game in a row here today. Yeah, that, that's a big loss to Auburn. Justin Powell, Kentucky Mr. Basketball, double-figure guy, played the one and the two. And you mentioned that Auburn has that self-imposed penalty this year. And Bruce admitted yesterday that the challenge now of keeping his guys motivated with no seed to play for, no standing to play for, nothing in Joe Lenardi's bracket, that, that, that's a real deal now. And if there's anyone in college ball that can kind of work their way through it, it's the motivation of Bruce Pearl. But that is a real challenge for this Auburn team. Devin K play to shot Kentucky at Stegman. You know, but all three of those games had some surprise element to them. The fact that Tennessee goes down against Florida, who was undermanned at the time, and, and, and the way they took the beating. The lack of offense from Tennessee is a real concern. That three-point shooting by Alabama on uh, Wednesday night was just phenomenal. It was a phenomenal thing to watch against a, a good LSU ball club and then Kentucky just a, a physical play at the end of that ball game just got shoved out of the way they take another hard loss and they're the standings right now everybody just like in SEC football everyone is chasing roll tide yeah Kentucky that started out three and oh now all of a sudden losers of three straight uh, they are outside of the NCAA tournaments right now the second half of the season will be huge for them and uh, it has made that Missouri-Tennessee game tonight on the SEC Network a big one. The loser of that falls three games behind Alabama in the standings. Yeah, that's an interesting ball game. You know, the first time around, Tennessee went to Columbia and, and put it on Missouri. And talking to Conzo afterwards, he said he felt like his guys weren't quite ready for a national stage ranked team versus a ranked team. And I think it affected them a little bit. I think Missouri will be ready for that ball game tonight. The problem is, I know Tennessee's going to be ready as well. Rick Barnes had a lot of film to go through with his guys, and that, that, that will be one of those games that if you're a, not a grown man and you're not tough, you might as well just tell the coach, I think I'll sit this one out. That, that, that's going to be an all-business ball game tonight. Ladies, Bracketology has six teams uh, into the NCAA tournament. That's pretty much been the standard from day one. We shall look at the breakdown of teams that might be headed to the NCAA tournament, including that but Alabama side moving up to a two seed. Yeah, they, they that, and then that, that's exactly what they're playing like. Just if you go by the eye test, I don't know, they're right there with anybody in college ball right yep. now, the way they're playing off both ends of the floor. Shot off the mark from Jamal Johnson, Sharif Cooper on the sideline right now for Auburn. But South Carolina, they, they have to get Jermaine Kuznar going offensively. He's now made two out of his last 15 shots, number five in white right there. He's a big, strong, physical guard, can win his matchup one-on-one, -on -one, but the ball has to start dropping for five in white. He's the only starter that hasn't scored yet here this afternoon. Keyshawn Bryant now making an appearance off the bench. He has emerged as a go-to guy, number 24 in white. Off the bounce to the rim, Cambridge with the block. This is one of the best shot blocking teams in the country. In fact, number two in the NCAA. And he'll try and match it up with a three at the other end. That won't go. Numbers for Carolina on the push. Bryant will take it and get a trip to the line. You mentioned the shot blocking ability of Auburn. What they put 14 block shots on Georgia on the road. It's about 10 or 12 days ago, and they, they really meet you at the rim well, talking about Auburn. You might get by that initial defender, but they are athletic and fast and really value that restricted arc area defense and meet you at the rim well. 
Bryant, the 6'6 junior, out of Winter Haven, Florida. 19 against Missouri midweek. Last weekend put up 26 against LSU. Really one of the more dynamic athletes in the SEC. I'm not just saying in the sport of basketball. This guy is a running, jumping freak of a phenomenal guy. And his game is all about driving and making those hard, tough rim plays. Not a three-point shooter. I believe he's only made one out of his last 15 on the year. But you have got to stay in front of Keyshawn Bryant. That guy right there, off the bounce, off the lob plays, the tip plays, very dangerous. Look at the jump and scoring the last couple of games. Deep three is good. Alan Flanagan, sophomore from Little Rock, second most improved scorer in the SEC this year. From three a game up to nearly 14. Yeah, big, strong, lefty, physical guard. Your pickup point against Auburn, I believe, has to be a step or a step and a half higher than normal. Auburn's going to shoot 33s a game. They're going to make nine or ten of them. Rebound for Jalen Williams. And talking about bar for Auburn, man, you've got to be outside that three-point line. You get your toes inside that three-point line. That's just a green light for really those top seven scores for Auburn to step back and fire. Flanagan with a lot of confidence, more of a bully type, strong ball guard going to the rim, but. Bruce Pearl feeds his guys with so much confidence as a shooter, Beth. The only thing he's against is early transition guard to threes. And there's the first play by Cooper. You get to that left paw, finishing around that rim in traffic. Off the bounce for Sharif, his first bucket. He's got a couple of assists as well here in the early going. Well, for a right-handed kid, he's actually better going to his left, which is kind of, it's not, it's not the norm. And he's so good and crafty, Beth, at getting that shot off with his left hand in traffic with guarded defenders around him. He's He can scoop it on you. He can quickly get it in and out. He can delay it, get in your body and finish it. He's a hard, tough layup maker. And uh, again, as high of a usage rate as we have right now in college ball. So we'll look today, Jimmy, for the adaptability and the changes that they have made after seeing a lot of double teams that cost them a 19-point lead in their loss earlier this week. You, you know, Bruce Pearl knows the scout is going to be trying to take away the drive and make him shoot threes. They can prove he can knock some down, but it's uh, easier said than done. Yeah, it is. And what Arkansas did, they just, they, they, they literally, Arkansas committed two guys to him when he got to that half-court stripe and got the ball out of number two's hands and made someone else beat him. And for about a 12-minute stretch, I think it really changed the game. And Arkansas was down 19 points and came back and won that thing. But that's the, that's the respect that this young man has right now from SEC coaches when they go into that film room and their first, first question they ask is, what are we going to do with Sharif Cooper? He just picked up his first personal foul, Lawson at the line. Love his demeanor, and you know Frank talked about it earlier that that's the kind of kid that, as the opposing coach, you can't tell if you're rallying him or not. He never gives a sign. He never blinks. He never shows weakness. Whether he's got 30 in the game or three, that expression has not changed in the four games that I've watched. So as an opposing coach, you can't read him. You can't rattle him. You just keep on hard charging. And he's already proven to be a uh, lover of the big moments. His debut was the rivalry matchup with Alabama. He dropped 26 points at nine assists on the Crimson Tide. The game changer was late when John Petty moved over on to defend him the last couple of minutes and was disruptive enough to help Alabama grab the four-point win. Yeah, he was. That's the same way I described you. Lover of the big moments. <laughs> Best, best at the big at the big moments of the game. This is dangerous here. One on one defense. Seventh Woods gets the assignment and forces the turnover, and then the break out the other way, and a couple of missed layups. Good hustle for Auburn to get back defensively. And now it's the Tigers on the run, getting sloppy.
Woods gets into the paint. Cannot knock it down. Just never has been a scorer, Seventh Woods. Average one point at North Carolina, and boy, Auburn is so good at that stuff right there because, Beth, they have multiple guys that can run out in front of the play. And the ability to go up and get it around the rim and exceptional transition conversion offense passing team is Auburn. Starts with two in orange. Another assist for Sharif. He'll try and take that one himself. South Carolina's missed its last six shots trying to get off the shine, and the drought will continue. Five point Auburn lead when we come back. A deeper dive. NBA style on Sharif Cooper. A deep range on your jump shot that goes in at a good clip, and you have to be a tough physical defender at your spot. He's not there on either one of those two yet. They are phenomenal. Auburn come out of timeouts on that lob play, by the way. But I'm betting on him, Beth, that he will grow into those two areas. I think the question, right, Jimmy, is it, will it happen this year, or, or is he a guy that wants to stick around? Perhaps play in the NCAA tournament next season and continue to I, work on his game. Yes, I, I, I say yes because I think look at the vision, man. That's that is uncommon and rare. He saw that thing probably a couple of dribbles before he ever let it go, knowing exactly where his receiver was going to be. I, I think Sharif Cooper, I know, has the right ears and the right eyes and the right voices around him will help him make the decision. He is not driven at all by this is my only year at Auburn. I'm out of here. He's all in on Auburn right now. Well, he's already uh, perfected the coup. Oop. He's got six assists here in the first half. Looking for another. Short on the shot. Good follow. It's all Tigers so far in the first half. 25-14 advantage. Yeah, and, and it's all off of a hot ball for Auburn offensively. They are moving that thing right now. Auburn already has seven assists on their nine makes, and the ball is really hot. And it's not just hot coming out of Cooper's hands. It's everybody that has the opportunity to make the right play. A 13-1 to 1 run as South Carolina has gone frigid cold. Over a five-minute scoring drought. That's off that out-of-bounds timeout where Sharif Cooper just waits on the back screen to happen and gets an open rim run. And he, he saw that play, Beth, probably before he ever got the basketball. He knew where his initial pipe runner was going to be. And he is uncanny, like almost peculiar in how fast he sees the game. He's a quick kid because his eyes lead him into his speed. He's trying to help Auburn run it up here while South Carolina is struggling to make a shot. Here is Cooper fouled on the drive. Can't crowd him. You, you can't crowd Cooper. What's he, three out of almost 30 from the three-point line on the year. But right there, that, that first vision, he knew, man. I'm just going to wait till you get clear of the traffic. Anytime an Auburn offensive player, Beth, is a step and a half or two steps ahead in transition, that ball will be delivered on the money. This season with and without Sharif Cooper. They're two and two with him in the lineup. South Carolina's got numbers. And a foul on the shot. This will be on Jamal Johnson. AJ Lawson back to the free throw line. This was a priority when we talked to Frank Martin this week. Need AJ to be aggressive to the rim. This is a kid that, uh, that the, the, the pluses of loss and Beth are he never gives into fatigue. Like he plays hard 35, 36 minutes. Very well conditioned athlete. Has improved his strength. Uh, his game right now is still as a cutter without the ball and a three point shooter. But he has to get where he's dragging defenses with him on the drive and get to that free throw line five or six times a game. He knows it. He's working on it. But that's his next step in progression if he has any hopes of playing after college. Well, you gotta knock him down. He's two for five at the line. Man, what was that? Response is the three from Jamal Johnson. They've knocked down I, five I what, already. I, I say what was that because off of a free throw situation, 
you allow Auburn to run to a wide open, nobody in your airspace three point look. Those are the kind of things that, that drive any head coach to make some quick substitutions. Just not engaged, not talking. You get into yourself and you worry about your own space and you don't see the floor and communicate, talk it out. And you see Auburn out to a 28 15 run for a lot of those reasons I just said. Missed free throw for Lawson. I mean, they, they, they take the ball away from their own basket, and in two bounces, a wide open. No one is even in the airspace of Jamal Johnson, and that, that's not Frank Martin basketball at all. Lawson able to knock down the second. Their only points of late are the free throws. Safe. Been on a seven-minute drought without a basket. Another no look from Cooper off the fingertips. Under eight to play at South Carolina and a 28-16 lead for the Tigers. Say is in the best shape of his life coming in. And wow. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I was thinking last night when I came up with that idea, but there, Whew. there it is. That's that's as close as I'll ever get to stepping into a ring like that. No. No amount of proper number 12 that I could consume will be able to scrub that from my eyeballs, James. It took, it took about an hour to get that to get that uh, paint off of my off of my chest that uh, that tattoo. You know, if, if if and I'm thinking if he wins it, I'm going to go back with it. Just uh, the, the permanent thing. That's that's what's at stake tonight in this fight for me. Yeah. yeah. You've got the home kit now. You might be getting a call from Dana White to join the broadcast after that display. <laughs> that is, that was impressive uh, commitment oh, right there. Man. I, 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 I can't wait. I've got, a, I've got another game to, this, this evening leading into that fight, LSU at Kentucky. When that thing's over, my wife and daughter and I, we're going to go downstairs and we're going to put that thing on and, and watch wow. him get after. That's a, I've really gotten into... Obviously, I've really gotten into it. Oh, yeah. Now that, that, that's how he walks, first of all, right? I mean, Let's similar, but what... that's why. He... <laughs> the, who does it better? We need a who does it better vote right now on Twitter. You you could blow up uh, social media or you could be ending the careers of both me and Carl. Are you working with Carl Adams tonight? <laughs> it could be the last American well, season. Of us. <laughs> well, first of all. <laughs> At this point, I'm still scheduled to work a game with Carl Ravage. That might be TBD <laughs> as of this point. <laughs> but that's going to be a, a monstrous fight. The, the biggest non-title fight in the, in the history of that sport. So, I, I'm, I, I, he's already, I can't He's wait. already beaten Poirier once uh, several years ago. The rematch coming up tonight. We've got a nine-point game here in Columbia, South Carolina. Not able to find the bottom of the net much here in the first half, shooting just 29%. They went through about a seven and a half minute drought and Auburn, meanwhile, assisting on eight of their 11 buckets. Seven dimes already dropped by Sharif Cooper. You know how Auburn strutted into this arena to start the game? That same McGregor strut. And they are moving that ball. You talked about the assist numbers of Cooper already with seven. And Auburn can really put you in a bind in their conversion offense, Beth, because you have to stop the ball. And then they're flooding the floor with shooters. And the more you can keep Auburn out of conversion transition game, the better you are, South Carolina, and for everyone going forward against the Auburn Tigers. Well, you mentioned it's uh, number one on the... Uh on the preparation list is what are you going to do with Sharif Cooper? Uh, Frank Martin talked yeah. about locking the arena doors, try, trying to stop him from even getting off the bus was the first line of defense. <laughs> he said he had three Sharif guys waiting. Make it into the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he said, Beth, Jimmy, I got three guys waiting for him tomorrow. We're going to grab him when he gets off the bus, and we're going to take really good care of him. We're going to let him watch the game and give him some food and hold him in the closet, and, and that's our plan. And it, it, about as good as you can ask for is that lean back shot that he's just not comfortable with yet from that three point line. Yeah. Thought about the three, gave it up instead, and they'll get another possession out of it. Mm. And the runner is good from Alan Flanagan. Strong, tough, physical. Just love the contact part of the drive. 22 in orange from Auburn. 
His game really developed, Beth, when he was playing the point guard before Cooper got eligible. The ball was in his hands a lot. He became a much better reader of the defense. Levesque fouled up by the basket. I'm talking about by Flanagan. You come charging out, out of respect for his three-point ability, and he plays low and strong and tough. Look how low he gets, almost like in a defensive stance with that basketball, keeping it tight through the contact, and just rises up. A kid out of Arkansas, that high school player of the year in the state, really developing and coming on as one of those big physical guards that Bruce Pearl loves in his career. We're seeing, too, uh, around the basketball landscape, Jimmy, the guys that took care of business, even during the pandemic, you know, what, what do you do when nobody's watching? And uh, Allen obviously was working on his game, knowing there would be a huge opportunity this year with, what, 84% of their scoring gone from last yeah. year's 25-win team. He said, I'm, I'm going to be one of those guys this. that's going to fill the void. Yeah. When I look at this Auburn team, if they were all if talking about Cooper, if he were to come back and the, the talent they have coming in, you can see Bruce Pearl building towards another Final Four type, really special team. And that's kind of how he did it when he first got to Auburn. And Bruce Pearl has found a, a niche with small guards. You go back to Jared Harper, Javon McCormick, and now this kid. And his ability is rich really really rare again. He's right-handed. He's better faster more confident going to his left But he's got all the finishes at least to get himself to the free throw line as a hard tough layup maker and attempter It was a one-handed shot you're gonna see he's going to land on the left elbow mm -hmm. Here to have injured it Hits the free throw, but he's been holding that left elbow under the sleeve She referenced the success in recent years for Bruce the last three years the best in Auburn history That senior class that just departed the winningest ever Highlighted by the trip to the the last final four that we actually played Back in 2019 That's only Kuznard's third made shot of the last couple of ball games five and white And, and I said earlier they tried, tried to, to make get him going. Run. He made it. Yeah, he made a really nice drive and played off two feet under control Levesque scrapping for the offensive rebound. The kick out to Kusnard. Still you gotta struggling make. to dial it in. One for seven in the first half. Flanagan comes up a bit short. End to end action. The nice spin. Bryant couldn't knock it down. Now that was really, that was spectacular transition defense by Cooper because he's responsible for defensive balance and he ran stride for stride with Keyshawn Bryant out in the open floor and had his body, if, if, if he's not there, Bryant takes that thing in for an easy layup. So this is a kid that, again, he studies the NBA game nightly on film that Bruce Pearl talks about. And he understands winning plays and that's just, whew. That's spread offense, point guard, NBA stuff waiting to happen right there by Cooper. Another Coop oop for his uh, eighth assist of the day. He won over his teammates, Cooper did. Didn't play the first 11 games, but just grinding away in the open gym by himself. To the fact that when he got became eligible, Beth, it, it, Bruce went to his club and three different guys offered to give up their starting spot out of respect for Cooper and what he is to this team. And just a, a, a battler. And when you're that small, you've had to battle your way through and make yourself a player because he was not this level of a guy as a ninth grader when Bruce Pearl first saw him. And that dude just went to work as a 5'11 guard and is a special, special kid. Got you. Well, he's, uh, he's watched his big sister and the success that she's had, making it to the professional ranks, playing in the WNBA. He's hoping to follow suit and head to NBA success at some point. We heard so much in uh, you know the first half of the season about the other impact freshman, Kate Cunningham and, and Cam Thomas. And uh, he has joined them now, one of three freshmen that have had three games of at least 25 points. And he's only needed four games to do it. 
Yeah, think about that. Your first four games are against SEC competition. Big, strong, physical athletes, and really nothing has bothered this kid. I know Arkansas doubled the ball out of his hands, but he still got his 25 points and moved the ball. His teammates didn't do a good job of operating off that double team. South Carolina trying that to find his way back into this thing. Beth, that shot by Auburn, you know what they'd do if you play for Alabama? It would get you out of the game. They don't, they don't take those. They don't take those long twos. They've eliminated the 15-footer from the game plan. That shot chart the other day against LSU was amazing. All threes and layups. Cooper going to have a chance from deep, and he'll knock it down. You've got a little bit of a lean back, which... Over my course of time coaching and watching guys evaluating small guards Naturally have a little bit of lean back because they've had the habit to get their shot off But he needs to straighten that thing up going forward. And I, I think he will he's still he'll, he'll, he'll put the work in on it There is no doubt in my mind Okay, you got the ball stop match up the shooter find him match up It's too easy finding Flanagan He's got nine, big, Williams with 11 yeah. to lead the way for the Tigers. Don't you like the versatility of Flanagan? Make a three, drive it in transition. He goes down and gets a, an early shot clock post up at the mid post, holds guys off. Tough to defend, hard to guard. It all starts with Sharif Cooper now with nine assists in this ball game. The lean back threes up for about an hour trying to look like I work, you know, work out on a consistent basis. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I have no business in that ring. None, zero, <laughs> none, none. <laughs> oh, oh, good man. stuff, good stuff. Getting set for McGregor and Poirier tonight on ESPN Plus. As Kusnard no, my, hits a free throw. My wife's, I, my wife's idea was to just get a t-shirt and, and draw on. I'm like, no, wait a minute. We work for ESPN. We, if we do something, we're going to do it. We're going to paint. Get, we're we're going to paint. paint. We're going to do push-ups. We're going to film this dude, and we're going to practice that McGregor strut. Kennedy, my daughter, was the, the choreographer of the whole deal. How much steel wool was required to scrape that off after uh, after the, the photo shoot? <laughs> There's a little bit of it still on. We're now we're not going to prove it today, but I, just trust me. There's, there's, there's parts of it that are still there and may, may be there for a while. So I'm, I'm really pulling for him at this point. It may not come completely off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Total commitment. And right now, the Auburn Tigers enjoying the road trip thus far, 45 to 32. And we are already on uh, Sharif Cooper triple-double alert. Seven points, nine assists, five rebounds. Not even to the midway point yet. Double digits for Flanagan and Williams. And that's going to be a key moving forward, right? If teams try and take away Cooper, other guys have to pick up the scoring slack and speak of the devil. Flanagan knocks down another triple. Yeah, such supreme confidence for those Auburn shooters in transition. And that was a little bit of a guarded three, but Flanagan in rhythm felt good about it. I think Auburn is really good shooting out slots in transition. Not so much the, the mid to deep corner, but they are really, really lethal and have been for years shooting out of those slots. Usnard the skip to Lawson. He'll counter with a triple. There's something about the vision of that part of the floor. That's that slot three that I'm talking about there. It's, just, it really, it's very kind to a shooter's eyes. Cooper got all the way to the rim. In traffic, the kick out for his 10th assist of the first half. Manaya's deep three. Boarded by Williams. A 50-burger up on the board in the first half. Still a minute to go for Auburn. Seven triples from six different guys already, and they add another. Cooper took one more bounce just to make sure that he drugged the defense with him another three or four feet so the defense could not recover to the shoot. I don't know if we'll have time to go back to it, but a small, simple thing that this kid really understands. A three barrage back and forth. 
They can hold for close to one here if they want. Auburn 13 assists on 19 makes, and then the, the big chunk of that is from this kid with the ball right now. He's got to let bring a ball screen. What do you do here with your Bruce? You, you ball screening? What do you do? They will ball screen him and get a foul. Beth, watch this. You talk about dragging the defense one extra bounce. That bounce right there is what drug the defense and shrunk the court just another half of a step. Therefore, the recovery back to the shooter was not quick enough. And those are uncommon things that a young guy, sometimes they don't grasp until their third or fourth year, or even their first year in the league. He knows, drag that defense as far as I can drag him now. Bam, reverse pivot, kick it out, run to the other end, celebrate. Well done, really, really well done. And just the one turnover so far as well. And here he is at the free throw line, seven points, two for two from the stripe. Coming up over on ESPN and the app at 2 Eastern, we'll head to Chapel Hill for NC State and North Carolina. The Tar Heels have handled the Wolfpack of late, winning five of the last six matchups, but the Wolfpack won their December showdown by three. Devin Daniels had 21 in that one for NC State. If, if Carolina gets swept by NC State, yeah, that could very well keep them out of that NCAA tournament. That, yeah. that has major impact for the Tar Heels today. Huge day, right, for the for the Blue Bloods. Uh, Kansas mm -hmm. trailing at halftime right now to Oklahoma. And then we've got Carolina coming up 2 o'clock on ESPN. Duke, 4 o'clock on ESPN. And Kentucky, 6 o'clock tonight on ESPN. Duke, Carolina, Kentucky, first time since 1961 that uh, all three have been out of the polls and do not have a win against a ranked foe. That's really an odd time, and those programs have different issues of why they've gotten to that point. I, I look at Kentucky's roster right now. It's just not, it's just not strong enough, not not talented enough, not not old enough. And their next stretch, talking about Kentucky, their next six games against teams that are all inside that top 40 of, of the net ranking, and that that game tonight in in Rupp for Kentucky feels like it is a must get something going in the right direction before the gauntlet continues to hit them right on the nose. A tough foul, isn't it right for the half, huh? Yeah, final seconds here. Auburn has hit five shots in a row. They've also gotten to the line. And Cooper can get a first half double-double if he can knock a pair down here. I'm pulling for him. I, I like things like that. There we go. And then uh, if he can pick up five rebounds in the second half, uh, we're talking about messing around and getting a triple-double. Beth, he's doing it against a team that every coach in the league will tell you defensively. They get on top of you, South Carolina does. They are physical. They are gap-heavy. They knock you off the path, and he is just doing anything he wants right now against that Carolina defense. Expression never changes. You don't know if he's got a double double right now or he's got 3,002 points. Big first half for the Auburn Tigers. Better than 50% shooting. Balanced attack. Three guys in double figure scoring. And Sharif Cooper tosses in the 11 assist as well with just the with 20 minutes to go. And Auburn in possession to open up the second half. There he is, Sharif Cooper. Struggling to possess. Runner off glass, and that will go. And then the Gamecocks with the turnover heading the other direction. But they're just, I'm just watching coming out of the half to see what South Carolina is doing with that ball screen defense of Cooper. Is Frank Martin going to change it up? He's going to try to change the game by, by doubling, trapping, hard hedging, all those things I'm sure that he talked about with his staff at halftime because 
Cooper is taking that ball. Great pace, great patience. Just dictating again. He, he has set the rules how this game's going to be played. And can Frank Martin change those rules? I mean, they've got a score at that end, and they've turned it over on back to back possessions after shooting only 35% in that first half. Trip to the line coming up for Auburn. They now have their biggest lead of the afternoon. I don't know about you. I, I, I've seen uh, Cooper smile in this in this first half. Uh, Flanagan with a big smile. How about yesterday? We were talking with AJ Lawson, and we kind of asked him, "What's it like to be playing again?" And the true, authentic joy and smile that AJ Lawson flashed you and I on our Zoom call. It really kind of took me back a little bit. You know, just to, to see the emotions of a guy that South Carolina's been through it now with all the COVID pauses and the delays and the quarantines. And he talked about it when we quarantine, we're isolated by ourselves. And uh, it's the, the, the pure appreciation that these kids have right now that I'm continuing to see time and time again being blessed and thankful for the opportunity to play came jumping. King jumping through that Zoom call yesterday for me. I don't, did you pick up on that as well? And he, and he specifically mentioned grateful to be playing with my brothers was the yeah. was the phrase that he used. Um, you know, we've we've learned quickly to move on to the next, whether it's the next practice, the next day, the next play. And uh, he even referenced Jimmy. You know, we, you have to approach it like every game could be your last because we don't know if there's another pause coming. If uh, if the COVID will dictate that there's a shutdown of a greater degree. Yeah. A, a, a package, a, a footage package in your, in your season after they roll it and you're saying no more games for you, Dykes. Uh, this, is, this is from Frank Martin, and he has really fought through it, Frank has. And not one time, and I expect it, not one complaint. Not one feels sorry, not one anything from Frank other than I miss my guys. I miss my guys. And that's, I told you yesterday, I have mad respect for you as a coach. Prior to this COVID situation, and it went to a whole nother level. See, now you have handled it really with a program that's been hit as hard as anybody, Beth, in college ball. Yeah. Well, and, and we're seeing, too, uh, you know, just about every game where we have a chance, you know, to talk three game with, with the coaches. Um, the importance of chemistry, the importance of spending time just shooting the breeze, hanging around the coach's office or, or in the hotel lobby, you know, when you're on the road. Those, those moments that bring guys together, that, that that help you understand as a player when the tough love comes, well, I know he cares about me and I know he's interested in helping me get better. Those are the moments that have been hard to come by. And it all has to happen on, on the court quite often. It's going to be a foul on Cooper. That'll be his second. No, no real South foul Carolina. trouble to speak of. Although uh, Kusnar does have a third for South Carolina. Beth, if South Carolina has any chance of getting back in this ball game they, for the next four or five minutes, I think they need to get the ball out of Cooper's hands, not let him get it back, not let him control the game offensively. And they have got to find some offense to match the numbers of this kid right here. And he needs to keep firing and shooting. That's what he does best. But someone else has to step up as that second and third score in this game for South Carolina. He's got a 30-point game under his yeah. belt against Texas A&M. Their, their one win in SEC play. And now he's 6 of 7 from three-point range this afternoon for all his points. 21 on the board for A.J. Lawson. Here's Bryant. Trying to get an easy bucket and a trip to the line instead. One of the few mistakes by Cooper in this game. Drove it into a crowd and really tried to force a play in a crowd. And watch Lawson come off of That's just a, a really good job of a, a just kind of a flip handoff. Got a little bit of a brush screen by Manaya off the pass. And that's when he's been at his best. He's still a young kid in terms of where he is in his classification as a junior. And he's got a lot of growth in his game still talking about Lawson. He knows he needs to drive it harder. He knows he needs to get to the free throw line more. And if they're going to chop their way back into this game, he's got to continue to get good looks and work hard for those looks. You earn your shot. And Lawson has earned his shot so far in this game. 
third in the SEC in made triples, and uh, he may move up a notch or two after today's performance. Six of seven from downtown. Unfortunately, the rest of the team is 0 for 7 mm. from outside the line. Wow. And the three for Auburn, and they're ninth, so they're at their game average with 17 minutes still to go. And, and, and the, the moxie that Auburn is shooting that ball with today. Just rise and fire in their senior rim about twice the size that it normally actually is. Off the dribble, Williams with another bucket. 21 now for Jalen. Um, 9 of 12 shooting. For a team, uh, Jimmy, that won't be headed to the NCAA tournament, you, you start picking out your other Super Bowls, right? You, you know, you already have a win over Kentucky on the resume. You know, who, who else's party can you spoil? They, they have Baylor or uh, Missouri and then Baylor coming up next week. They've already faced number one Gonzaga. Now number two Baylor awaits in that uh, SEC Big 12 challenge next Saturday. Yeah, what a challenge that will be in, in terms of for Sharif Cooper going on the road against arguably the best defensive backcourt in college basketball, what Scott Drew puts on the floor. And that will be a game that I will have my eyes on to see how this kid handles it. And NBA scouts will have their eyes on it as well. That, that's the kind of big physical guard defense that you're going to have to go up against in the NBA. And be on the ESPN networks, by the way, next weekend as Dylan Hardwell gets the impressive throwdown. Who's snarred? To the line for Jermaine on a day that's been all about the Tigers, Jimmy. Well, it's all Auburn. And again, they are in complete confidence, in complete rhythm. Missouri State, the only players with statues outside of their campus arenas. I, I would tell Asia Wilson that her grandmother was with her. Mm -hmm. She said, if my grandmother was here today, Asia, your grandmother was with you, young lady. And I had the pleasure of coaching against Asia Wilson. She walked on the floor as a freshman and when I was coaching at Arkansas. And, and I knew this was a special talent, a special kid, the joy that she played with. And that was that was as good of a moment that I've seen in sports in a long, long time. The grace, the beauty, the eloquence that she handled that situation with. So, Asia, I don't know if you're watching or not, but very very proud of you and what you've become and who you are and your grandmother is right there with you young lady well let's hope uh, Jimmy that the stars will align that uh, we will have uh, an Olympic Games this summer in Tokyo South Carolina's Dawn Staley will be the head coach and a pretty good shot that Asia Wilson would be right there with Team USA mm, phenomenal player Beth I'm, I mean yep. just the size the skill the toughness the passion, the joy that she plays the game with. You know, watching our officials today, Pat Adams, Patrick Evans, Robert Felder, I know it's a 20 point game. Just watching the last couple of minutes because I was on a Zoom call earlier this week with about 200 officials across the country talking about some different things. And one of the things sharing with them was if you're an official that hustles and you bust your tail and you don't shortcut the close downs so you can save a few steps going the other way, if you're an official that hustles and works, you catch a break from a coach. I, I know I did when I coached. If I saw an official that was sweating and working and talking and hustling and, and doing all the things, you, you give those guys a break. And, and these two, three guys today, I know it's a 20 point game, I think they've done a really good job in that area. That makes sense. That does. Uh, I, well, I think you always, whether it's your guys or whether it's the other guys, you, you notice the effort and certainly with the sure. officials as well. I mean, I, I, I just know my own self-reflection as a head coach. 
I, I had a very short fuse for an official that I thought was lazy and wasn't sprinting and wasn't gaining an advantage and wasn't working across the baseline. And because it gives you as a coach a reason to think, did you really see it like you should see it? And you can feel that as a coach. You can tell when officials are all in and they are giving everything that they have to be in front of the play, officiate the defense, officiate the game from the ground up. You can feel it as a coach. And, and you have, I did, and I think other coaches, when I talk to them as well, they, they have that same little bit of slack for guys that just come in and say, I, it, it's a big game, let's go to work. I'm going to do my best for you, coach, and I appreciate it. Well, it's obvious too with announcers, and of course we have the opportunity to look at replays, and you you know when people are in position or when they're out of position. Yeah, yes, yeah. Boy, Auburn is just, they, they are really, on, on both ends of the floor, every part of the game, the defensive stops, the defensive cleanups on the board, the, the conversion to offense, the dive on the floors. This is an Auburn team, but you, you said it very well. They're, they're not going to win the SEC, but they could maybe keep someone from winning it or finish second or third. It, it's not just Cooper today moving that ball. They had Auburn hot hands defensively, and the ball has been hot offensively as well. Very impressive. Well, we thought they were pretty good in the first half when they were shooting 55, uh, you know, 52 percent. They're up to 61 percent here in the second half. Mm. The Cooper watch, by the way, uh, he is uh, still sitting on the five rebounds. He had the double-double already in the first half with 10 points and 11 assists. He's catching a break right now. If you missed it in the first half, we talked about Cooper. You know, the one thing not being able to go live to sites, you can't see the size of a kid. I'm guessing he's probably 5'11". And Frank talked about yesterday just how difficult it is to stay in front of the kid. And you know, I talked about the respect I have for Frank Martin in the first half. You, you could hear the congestion still in his body. Yesterday on the Zoom call, he talked about the lack of energy that he has right now as a coach. And I can tell you this as well as a head coach, in a normal year, when you're on top of your game and you're working out all the time, you're eating the right food, you're drinking a ton of water, your energy is completely zapped on a lot of game days or practice days. And for Frank to continue to battle through this with his energy level really dropped, the congestion's still there. Now that's some tough stuff, but I don't think we understand sometimes what coaches are going through, and especially for Frank right now. A couple of chances for Auburn, can't convert. And South Carolina comes out with it. Bryant, tough catch, and he gets the finish. Again, just their fifth game in 49 days. Six practices over a seven-week stretch as they battled with COVID-related issues. So, so where does that affect a guy like Frank Martin? I, I can tell you exactly where it affects him. It affects his defense. His defense is an up-on-top-of-you style. Deny your guy, guard your gap, guard your ball. And there's there's no give in from Frank Martin, but it but it is a system and a philosophy that I love But it requires daily shell drills all type of stuff that you have to put in and, and they've missed it Like I think defensively in Frank's mind right now They're probably at the first week of December Not not towards the end of January and there's just no way around it That's why the score is 76 and 54 and some of this stuff right now Don't forget, coming up over on ESPN at 2 Eastern, North Carolina and North Carolina State. After the Wolfpack won the first matchup back in December, Tar Heels will look to exact uh, some revenge in Chapel Hill. Our Blue Can't Blue lose day. it. Yeah. With uh, Kansas trailing Oklahoma with eight minutes to go. We've got Carolina coming up at 2 o'clock, Duke at 4 o'clock, Kentucky at 6 o'clock tonight. I said can't lose it, Beth, T talking about North Carolina. Can't get swept by NC State. You're already way at the back of Jimmy's jet. If you're on at all, better win that ball game. She once worked for ESPN one day, 
And we had the conversation earlier this week, and I told her I was working with you, and she said, Dad, I, I love it when you work with Beth. Uh, she's, she's outstanding. So much like Asia Wilson has fueled hope and dreams for young ladies, you have too. I want you to know that, that everyone that works with you, we see how hard you work, the, pro the professional that you are. I was amazed yesterday, you come off of a Thursday, Thursday night women's game, we're on a Zoom call Friday morning getting ready for a men's game. Your questions are on point, you're on top of it. And I just want you to know that, that the impact that you have on a lot of young ladies out there that want to do, they want to be you one of these days. And from Chris, myself, for, 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 for dads with daughters, thank you. I just want to tell you thank you. Well, I, I appreciate that. that. That means a lot, Jimmy. And, and I did have a good uh, back and forth with Chris about that. It was, uh, it was a terrific moment because... You know, we, we've been through a lot this last year, right? And and the importance of being able to see it, you know, somebody that looks like you, somebody that sounds like you, um, to be able to not only pursue something that, that I've always dreamed of, but to pursue whatever it is you want to go after in, in this amazing profession that we're all a part of. And, and really, that's the hope. You know, the conversations I have with people like, you know, my, my friends Doris Burke and and Jessica Mendoza and, and you know, Holly Rowe, people that have been around for, for so long as you, you want to open the door and, and give people hope uh, that, that they can pursue whatever it is they choose to do, not necessarily follow anyone else's path. And, and, and you know, to be honest with you, it all starts with these guys right here on the court, uh, being a student athlete myself, you know, playing D1 basketball. Uh, all the experiences, the camaraderie, the chemistry, you know, we're seeing you know, Sharif Cooper, and you talk about everything is about the team and everything is about your guys, and, and it's the same, you know, for us in television. Everything is about the crew, our, our team that we work with, and, and the understanding, um, you know, that young eyes are always upon us and young ears are always listening to us, and uh, it, it is a responsibility that, that we all take very seriously, and certainly I do in, in, in in all of my game preparation, knowing that there are people out there that, that it may impact. And so it's great to hear about your daughter, and it's great to hear about Chris's daughter. And, um, you know, sometimes uh, there are uh, there are guards, quite frankly, that are, that are hard to reach. And, uh, you know, I, I think the hope and the understanding, you know, we, we've been through some other things you know, in, in the baseball world, for example, this week, where, you know, the, the hope is you... you you see other women in this profession as somebody's daughter and somebody's wife and somebody's sister and and the, the girl that used to sit behind you in English class and uh, you know that uh, everybody's dreams are important to, to, to chase and everybody should have the opportunity to do that and it's it's wonderful that college athletics quite often is the gateway to that and an you're, you're a that pro. you treasure just as much yeah. You're a pro's pro in, 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 in every area, in any sport that I listen to you at. And you know, it all started with that ball you have uh, behind you there, your 1,000th point, right, at Lafayette and uh, yeah, the other shoulder. Yeah. On a February day yeah. many, many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, Auburn just keeps really on soaring, right? Uh, Auburn's <laughs> offense impressive. They, they're they're going to flirt with a hunch here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, or beyond. Not stepping yeah. off the gas. That's not who they are. That is not who they are. They are all gas, no brakes under Bruce Pearl. And that's how they you know, ran their way to the Final Four. And I, I'm telling you right now, that I know where there's two teams, Baylor and Gonzaga, that clearly look like they are separated from whoever number three is. It changes weekly with me. Yeah. Alabama, out of this league, built just like Auburn was a couple years ago in their Final Four run. They are Final Four good. Joe Lenardi has them now this morning as that last two seed. And it's on both ends of the floor, Beth. This Alabama team is the real deal. And they get Bruner back. They're getting viable experience right now with him being injured. But So so Nate is building his depth and his, his, uh, his bench right now. But you saw the three-point barrage against LSU on Tuesday night. Don't sleep on their defense. They are the best defensive team in this league, and it all started on a Zoom call back in the spring with Nate and his guys, and that, that is a real team. No, no fear whatsoever. They have a swagger, a confidence about them that I love. Yeah. 
one of the decisions that guys have to make and, and the experience, the leadership from, I, I think, Petty and, and Jones in particular, you, you consider the NBA, you've seen some of your guys go on to the NBA, and you make the decision that, you know what, I, I need another year of seasoning. I need another year to improve. And now look at the leadership those two guys in particular are providing. I mean, Frank Martin said Herb Jones should be the MVP of the league, the player of the year at the midway point of the season. Yeah. You know, there comes a point when you're an older team like Alabama, and sometimes you I, I still see teams get beat, and the, 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 the normal response is, well, we just have to learn from this and loss and keep going. Well, there's a there comes a point when you're an older team, that's not the right answer. We have to learn from this and keep going. No, you should have the answer before the game ever began in terms of we didn't defend the, the backboard well. We didn't stay in front of the ball. And that's I think that's that's Alabama. They have an accountability about them in terms of how they're going to play regardless who the opponent is. And just remember, that bracket comes out, do not sleep on Alabama getting all the way to that final four. They are hosting Mississippi State tonight, 6 Eastern on the SEC Network. Finally leapt into the rankings at number 18, enjoying their best SEC start in 34 years. We saw Michigan lose this week. We saw Iowa lose again this week. Villanova is finally returning to play after a 27-day pause. Those are some of the other teams in the mix for some of those two and three seeds as we move into the second half of the season. And the foul of South Carolina trying to rebound and run with it. That'll be on Jalen Williams. We've had a situation with our uh, with our stat sheet throughout the day, but the latest update for Auburn, Flanagan with 21, Williams with 18, Cooper with 16, 11 assists and six rebounds for Sharif. And Cambridge, uh, Devin also in double digits with 10 points. Yeah, man, think about it. You got, you got four guys in double figures for Auburn. You've had an assist on every other basket that you've scored in this game. You've knocked down 14 out of your 15 free throws. You've done about everything you could ask for from a coaching standpoint. And that's why you're going to go beyond that 100 mark today against what traditionally is one of the best physical, grittiest defenses in this league. And South Carolina's had no answer for Auburn today. Cambridge runner up Flanagan, by the way, is 21, matches his career high, and a flush for Bryant there. Gonzaga, Baylor, Michigan, Villanova are your number one seeds as of today. We're about five weeks away, six weeks away, whatever it is. The two line right now, Texas, Houston, a club that I love, a non-negotiable rebounding, no excuse culture about them, Iowa and Alabama. Those are your top eight teams right now, according to most people. I, I agree with the list. Well, Beth, we appreciate it. A pro's pro. ESPN Plus tonight. Last time they fought, McGregor put it on him, right, in the first round? Like, first round? A, a minute in? Yeah, done. Was Next. It was quick. Well, that last the last fight for him about a year ago, right against Cowboy, that was over in a in a flash with the shoulder similar this, strikes. Similar to this game today, both of them five nine, 155 pounds. Just uh, and, and I, again, the reports I've really read a lot about McGregor as this week went on. The reports are he's in the best shape of his life. And that's one of those deals that, that you flinch tonight. <laughs> You're done. Yeah. Auburn impressive uh, in all facets. They've put up 94. They've hit 11 triples. 15 of 16. Is that right? From the free throw line tonight. Yeah. And five guys in double digits. A little bit of a zone look by Auburn. 1-3-1. One, one. Good job of getting the ball right to the elbow area. A lot of teams attack that 1-3-1 one, one these days by 
putting a player on the opposite elbow, which I, I really like that action. Just that I've seen it recently across the country. And you can attack that opposite elbow against a 1-3-1 one -one defense. The floor really opens up to you. The floor has opened up for this kid today, right? It sure has. Cooper's got 16 points, 12 assists. Now the challenge in, uh, in the triple-double world for him will be the... Uh, the rebounding aspect. He's got six. He'd need to crash the glass hard here to get his first TD in just his fifth game for Auburn. Making a huge impact, Jimmy. Well, he's, he just has a unique ability uh, to, to see the floor, what's in front of him, what's beside him. He can break the floor down in sections, I think, with his eyes. And he just needs a little bit of an opening, a little bit of space to deliver that ball. Bethany can deliver with either hand. He can make passes and shots off of either foot. He's tremendous from the free throw lane to the logo, which is a hard part of the floor to play in. And his, uh, his ability to have such a high, high usage rate. And you look at his numbers today, his turnovers, what's he at today? Three turnovers with as much as he has his hands on that ball in tight spaces, in traffic, guys crowding his airspace. And it's all going to boil down to his jump shot and how physical of a defender can he be at the NBA level. If those two things aren't ready, he won't be a first-round choice and he'll come back. If those two things are ready in the NBA's eyes, he'll be gone after this year. He just picked up his fourth foul, and with the game out of hand, he may be uh, done for the day. It's a new season high for the Auburn offense at 99 points. Here's for the century. And yeah, not on this trip, but a foul over the back. Alan Flanagan, a new career high with 24 points. 18 for Williams, 10 for Cambridge. And now uh, JT Thor of late has joined the party. 14 points, seven boards for him. Beth, I think it's really interesting talking about Auburn and what Bruce Pearl's done with that program. If Shreve Cooper were to leave and become a first round pick this year, it would be three straight first round picks out of Auburn that the kid actually came from Atlanta. Chuma Okiki was a 16th pick. Isaac Okoro was the fifth pick. And now this kid Cooper would be the same thing. And Bruce has done a really good job of getting his chops in in that Atlanta area, which is loaded with talent year after year after year. And Isaac Okora last year, Bruce kept telling people, I, I, and I didn't completely buy in. Bruce Pearl kept telling people on Isaac Okoro, he's the most NBA ready guy we have in the college game. And that is proven out by the number of minutes that Isaac Okoro is averaging right now. That physical, defend you, winning play style that Okoro brought to Auburn, he's brought to that league. And scouts listen to a guy like BP because of the, the, of the success rate that they're, having, that they're having with his kids. Yeah. And they do hit the 100 mark on the stuff from Akingbola. Keep in mind, too, we, we touched on the schedule that remains. Hopefully they will add another piece in Justin Powell still unable to return in the uh, Concussion protocol, but he was a guy that twice had 26 point performances the freshman out of Kentucky They still have Baylor They still have Kentucky again, and then how about this finish for Auburn at LSU? Florida, Tennessee, and at Alabama. You could make an argument, Jimmy, that the SEC championship will run through the Tigers those last two weeks with the damage they could do. Now, you're, you're spot on. That, that is exactly right. And, and the whole league notice it has been put on notice with Shereed Cooper. They're, they're capable of beating anybody in this league. Everybody's chasing Alabama right now with a two-game lead over LSU and Tennessee. An important game for LSU tonight at Kentucky. Carl Ravitch and I have the call. They have to shake off that beatdown that Alabama put on them on Tuesday. And Kentucky trying to find themselves after giving up a baseline out of bounds underplay that they should, they should have won the game at Georgia. They just didn't do it. Flanagan and that pass goes awry. Leor Berman is now in the game for the Tigers. Under four to go. Auburn has it in hand. 
And uh, I think that's a that's a huge game, uh, especially coming at home for Tennessee tonight. Yeah, monster game. And how's Tennessee going to respond? Because they absolutely did not show up in any facet of the game at Florida. And Missouri has had that one circled on their calendar since they lost the first time to Tennessee. Jeremiah Tillman, a kid in this league that we don't know enough about on the national level or in, on the interior. If he has one of those double-double type games and doesn't get in foul trouble, that, that, that's a hard game for Tennessee to win tonight. Berman will try for three. Comes up short, and Lawson has the rebound. A.J., a bright spot for South Carolina with his 23 points today. Hit six triples. And Bryant gets the three. That the frustrating thing for, for South Carolina fans, as, as I watch their team, didn't play well today. But when I've seen them play really well, they look like they have the pieces that they could have had an NCAA type team this year. But that, I'm telling you, that COVID pause and the breaks and the quarantines completely out of rhythm has just stolen what I thought was going to be a really, really good year for Frank Martin. And it's just a, it's a character test now for everybody in that program to keep moving forward, keep working through it. And, and Frank, you know, Frank has never walked away from a challenge in his life. His best players, when you say, Coach described this guy to me uh, over the years. He said he never walks away from a challenge. That is huge for Frank Martin. He will do everything he can to keep his team grown and going forward right now in a in a, just a, a, a season that you could not even dream up a year ago at this time. This was the stretch that uh, they had a chance to make a move with Auburn, Georgia, and Vanderbilt on the schedule. Game, uh, teams in the bottom half of the standings. Georgia Wednesday uh, night on ESPN2. And, and then things will toughen considerably. Florida, Mississippi State, and Alabama. Final two minutes. From Columbia and an impressive afternoon for Auburn. They'll improve to three and five in the league. Five guys in double digits, a new career high 24 for Alan Flanagan. The double double for Sharif Cooper today with the dozen assists to go along with his 16 points. See that Kansas game has gone final and Sometimes the game within the game can kind of tell you a little bit of why Kansas is struggling. This is the first time in the last eight years that Kansas has lost three games in a row. I look up again today, Jalen Wilson, who was playing like an All-American at times early in the year, only goes to the free throw line three times a day. So he's been to the free, free throw line three times total in his last three games. And you go on the road and you don't get to that free throw stripe as a team more than 14 times like Kansas today. It's just hard. It's hard to win a game, man. Coming up later this afternoon on ESPN, as well as the App Duke and Louisville face off in an important matchup in the ACC. And we'll follow that up with LSU Kentucky from Rupp Arena. You know, Jimmy, you, you have your eye on a, a few guys for the remainder of our Saturday afternoon and evening of college basketball, including a couple of players in those games on ESPN later on. Yeah, we got some some really, I think, undervalued, unknown talent on our ESPN and ABC family and networks throughout the day. At the uh, Raekwon Gray kid from Florida State really just jumped out at me Monday when I was doing the big Monday game between them and Florida State. But that, 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 that is as big of a mismatch as we have in the college game, Raekwon Gray. Jalen Johnson back off that foot injury. Look like a future really good pro. Cam Thomas in that Kentucky game tonight leads the SEC in scoring. Big 6 4 physical jump shooting guard. And, and McKinley Wright, I know they lost, uh, I believe, last night, but that, that is one of the better, if not the best, Pac 12 guards that we have right now. And I, I'm anxious to watch those guys today. Just some uncommon things that they do and really good players and games on our network coming up the rest of the day. We have set the table. Not sure we set the bar in some areas, but we certainly set the table. Mm. <laughs> Three o'clock, the party will get started on ABC. That's the Florida State Clemson game. And the Auburn 
Auburn Tigers. Uh, I said it early. Auburn set the rules of the game initially. Uh, that defensively, they are very aggressive. They cleaned up the backboard. Cooper set the rules of the game offensively. They shot lights out, and they walk off with 109 points against Frank Martin. That doesn't happen very often. He's too good of a coach. Big road win for Bruce Pearl, 109-86.